It's scary when you think about it, how much we depend on computers and the Internet, especially considering the system's never been more vulnerable. In a recent survey, three-quarters of businesses and organizations claim they experienced a cyber attack last year. This week, it was reported that hackers have been able to steal critical information from Google. So what's being done to stop this? Terry McCarthy continues our series, CBS Reports, Where America Stands. Cyberspace. It enables email, electricity grids, international banking, and military superiority. We can't live without it. But increasingly, experts say the openness of cyberspace is putting the U.S. in jeopardy. Well, we can say that sovereignty is at risk. Sami Sajari heads the Cyber Defense Agency, an information security company. Basically, our whole superpower status as the United States depends on computers. We lose them. We lose our status as a superpower. We become a third world country overnight. The U.S. is vulnerable because there's no accountability, limited security, and no international rule of law in cyberspace. Regularly, state-sponsored hackers in Russia and China are attacking government networks. The Pentagon gets 360 million unauthorized probes every day. In 2007, the cyber systems of Central Command, the State Department, Department of Commerce, and NASA were successfully hacked. They lost millions of pages of classified information. They're not alone. Under constant attack, corporate America is losing critical data to overseas competitors, robbing the U.S. economy of up to $20 billion a year. Two years ago, hackers stole top-secret exploration data from oil and gas industry giants ExxonMobil, ConocoPhillips, and Marathon Oil using custom-made spyware to bypass antivirus programs. It's so widespread now that we face the prospect of entire industries being stolen. While the details of their locations cannot be revealed for security reasons, CBS News has learned that there are factories in China and Southeast Asia that are exact replicas of plants in the United States, built with everything from hacked blueprints and supplier lists down to the settings used to regulate valve pressures for individual machines. So they're stealing entire factories. They're stealing all of the information on how to create and run and lay out a factory, not just at a basic level, but at maximum efficiency. Most worrisome is the risk to the U.S. power grid, a six million mile web of electrical distribution lines powering up nearly 145 million homes and businesses, all controlled by computer commands and open to cyber attack. This American hacker, known as Mudge, knows firsthand how vulnerable these systems are. Ten years ago, he bored into regional telecom and utility networks. Within a week, he'd worked out how to take most of them down. It was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. And that was my epiphany, was if I figured it out, other people figured it out also. Known as a gray hacker, someone who hacks without inflicting cyber harm, Mudge gave that information to those companies to fortify their systems. The result? They've become more complex. They've become more intricate in their interactions. But uh, are they more secure? No. They're really not. Uh, Verizon. Trying to solve this problem are companies like Verizon, who've set up five cyber crisis centers around the world. They guard against potential hacks on 700,000 miles of fiber optics, which link systems in 159 countries. We mainly uh, use our operation centers to figure out what's going on months ahead of time or weeks ahead of time to figure out the trends that are going on. The most serious attacks show up as red dots, alerting response teams while a hack is going on. About 70% of all global internet traffic at some stage passes through a Verizon router. And here in their security center in Virginia, they monitor about one billion security events every day. However, about three quarters of all cyber attacks come from outside the United States, where the US government has no jurisdiction. We're not as prepared as we should be. A reality the White House is trying to change. We're looking across the spectrum. What are the legal frameworks, where not only domestically, but internationally? Howard Schmidt is the newly appointed White House cyber czar. His job is to make America's networks safe against attacks wherever they come from. But the key issue that we understand and we, we're working towards is reducing the vulnerabilities. The government is also quietly hiring hackers to learn their secrets. Last month, Mudge began working for DARPA, the secretive research arm of the Department of Defense. However, the U.S. is playing catch-up. 
Countries like China and Russia have dedicated considerable resources to the cyber battlefront, while the U.S. has been slow to react. So establish it's a problem, declare it as a national priority, develop a plan, and then invest properly in this. The U.S. invented the Internet. Now it needs to find ways to make it safe. Terry McCarthy, CBS News, Ashburn, Virginia. And you can go to the Internet to find all the stories in this series, cbsnews.com. And while you're there, please tell us where you stand on the issues we're covering.